just told you about. Stolen by Butts. Chandler Thompson, yes! Well, you certainly knew Ball State would have to get off to a good start offensively, and they have. But defensively, they're going to force Felton Spencer to do some things he's not used to doing. And that's giving up the ball. Spencer is fouled. I believe this will be on McCurdy. It is. Well, the front line scoring is very important. And here, Kidd draws a lot of attention, and everybody forgets about Paris. Not anymore. run by Ball State. And we mentioned Paris McCurdy, the emotional leader of this team. He's doing a lot of talking out there. Williams shot is long, and I believe this foul will be called against LeBradford Smith, and that's his first. A look at Denny Crum in his 19th year. Took the Cardinals to the Final Four six times in the 80s. And he's off to a great start here in the 90s. Well, defensively, Keith Williams now guarding Scott Nichols. Williams has some experience. The alley -oop to Thompson, and they're going to call McCurdy for coming over the top. So that's his second. North Carolina up on top of the Sooners by four. The point I was going to make is that Williams has some experience in playing on a team that's won a national championship, although he didn't get to play in 86. He's going to have to settle his team down. He's a stability guy. He's got to show it. Nichols trying to get to the ball and dives out of bounds. He's last to touch it. Keep in mind, even though Ball State is out to a 14-5 lead, that's exactly what happened the other night. Idaho over Louisville. But then the Cardinals went on a 26-2 run. Well, Cardinals are as explosive as a team can be once they gain their confidence. We're in the John Huntsman Center. Tim Brandt, Len Elmore with you. 13.50 remaining in the first half. Ball State leading Louisville. 14-5 early on. Air ball thrown up by Sullivan and rebound goes to the Cardinals at Ball State. Billy Butts for three. Spencer pulls the rebound. If you're just joining us, and we tell you the Cardinals lead, it is not Louisville. It's Ball State. The turnover by Jerome Harmon, and that's four now for Louisville. Well, when we talk about the Cardinals who aren't confident, that's Louisville. They haven't been able to figure out the Ball State defense, and when they do gain a little bit of confidence offensively, they create some turn they create a turnovers by just giving the ball to Ball State. Felton Spencer in particular. They're going to call the offensive foul against Scott Nichols. That's his first. And it's the fourth team foul against Ball State. So that brings Dick Hunsaker off the bench in his first season. Hunsaker was a player and an assistant at Weber State just over the hills here at Ogden. It's like a dream for him playing here in Utah. That shot by Harmon is good. Instant offense. That's his job coming off the bench. And he's sorely needed right now. Hunsaker was trying to scramble up about 100 tickets for friends here in the Utah area. This foul will go against Chandler Thompson for reaching in. And Felton Spencer is the guy who was fouled. Well, what you want to do is talk about the patience. And patience can be exhibited on defense as well. Spencer on his feet, never left his feet and got the rebound and was fouled. A good job by, by Felton Spencer, good judgment by him not to leave his feet on that play. Scott Nichols goes out of the ball game now. He's the point guard, best defensive player on the team. He'll sit down with a breather, and Emmanuel Cross comes in. Cross, 6'1", 205-pound junior out of Chicago. Junior college transfer. Kimbrough had a notion. Instead, gives it up to Spencer. Turnover number five for Louisville. Louisville starting to show the ball to the Ball State defenders, and that allows them to slap it away. Last touch by Ball State, so we'll go to Louisville. You know, the difference between the two teams right now 
is that Ball State seems to be so much more active offensively and defensively. Hands are up. They're really moving towards the ball. Louisville is a little confused, and when they're confused, they're heavy. That's a good point, Lenny, because Ball State is trying to control the pace with the defense. And they play as good a defense as anybody in the country. There's another rebound. As a matter of fact, they keep opponents to 38% from the field. That's second nationally. But they are a surprisingly good defensive team, even though they're small. Billy Butts bring it out front. Get it over to Sean Parrish. Kidd has it knocked away. Ball's loose. And Sullivan comes up with it. Good jump stop. Can't hit the shot. Spencer comes in. And is called for the foul. So that's two very quickly on Felton Spencer. Eleven thirty-eight remaining in the first half. It's 14 to 7, Ball State. Ball State has led by as many as nine, and they love it here at the Huntsman Center. Hey, there's Rick Majerus, who helped build the Ball State program into the Hoosier State phenomenon it is. Coached and recruited a lot of these kids, moved on to Utah last spring, underwent heart bypass surgery in December, but he's here, and Dick Hunsaker and his players love it. Ball State with the lead and the ball. Billy Butts kicks it inside to Kidd with a turnaround jumper. 44. And the foul will be against Tony Kimbrough of Louisville. And without Felton Spencer in the game for Louisville, the inside play looks even more appetizing for Ball State than it did with Spencer in it. And then Ball State was doing such a great job inside. Curtis Kidd, second team all-conference. But he's battled a knee problem all year, and he's been strong thus far in the tournament. Rattles that one in. I'll tell you what Louisville is going to have to do defensively in the next trip down is start pressuring these passes a little more. They're going to have to get up on some guys, particularly Billy Butts. And to a certain extent, they're going to have to get up on um, Chandler Thompson. Hits them both, and it's 16-7. to Right now, Louisville shooting 30%, and that's not unusual. Ball State opponents in the NCAA tournament the past two years have shot only 38% combined. Nice pump fake, but the rebound goes to Sean Parrish. Ball State still willing to sag. Louisville still unwilling to shoot the jump shot. That's given to him. Boy, Holt is not going to get any closer to the basket than he was on that last shot. Curtis Kidd right over top of Kimbrough. And there's absolutely no pressure on the passer, and there was plenty of room between Kidd and Kimbrough. Williams on the baseline inside to Kimbrough, and Kimbrough tries to back it in and won't go down. Biggest lead of the game for Ball State. You got Emmanuel Cross handling the ball right now. He's a great penetrator. Great move by Cross. And it's 20 to 7, Ball State. The Louisville just looks like they don't have the intensity yet. And they don't have the willingness to get underneath in battle. Big shot. But they do have Jerome Harmon. Harmon just nailed it. Now Everett Sullivan's getting up on cross, putting more pressure up. You see Louisville players coming up and overplaying the passing lanes. Billy Butts for three. I tell you, Tim, that was about two or three steps beyond the three-point line. Sullivan goes inside the hole and he kicks it back to Williams. Another rebound for Kidd. And that's what I mean. Louisville not willing to contest the rebound on the offensive end of the Bears. Williams pulls it down. Tempo starting to pick up. Kimbrough for three. Big guy like Tony Kimbrough with that kind of firepower and that kind of range will be a help for Louisville. It's going to create some problems for Ball State's defense if they're going to continue to sag. That's the lead to 11. This is Miller.
Miller, he'll shoot for three. Yes! That's Miller's 31st three-pointer of the year. Williams will try to reset. This is Kimbrough for three. And it goes up and over. Ball State will control. Louisville offensively is really settling for the jump shot. It's playing right in the Ball State's hands. They're not convinced that Louisville is a great outside shooting team. That the reason they have such a high field goal percentage is primarily because they get those transition baskets and the dunks and, and acrobatic moves that they usually get, something Ball State's taken away from them. Sullivan and holding glass for Louisville. Jerome Harmon comes back in along with Spencer at the center spot. Parrish. This is Cross. Under eight minutes to play, first half. 26-12, Ball State. The winner of this game moves on to Oakland Friday night and plays UNLV. Connecticut, Clemson, and the running Rebels have already advanced today. And the foul will be against Emmanuel Cross. That's his first. That's the sixth team foul in Ball State. Billy Butts will come back into the ball game. 7.37 remaining first half. Big Ball State lead right now. The excitement continues. It's March Madness Mania. Frontline scoring has been a key, but look at the bottom statistic there. Louisville from the field, just 31%. That's because Louisville's really only settled for the jump shot outside. They haven't explored this Ball State defense. Ball State is disguising a man-to-man, -man, making it look like zone by putting their hands up and jumping around. All Louisville has to do is send cutters through, and they'll realize that, that it's man-to-man. -man. Stolen by Greg Miller. And he converts. On the floor right now for Louisville is Keith Williams, the Bradford Smith, Jerome Harmon, Everett Sullivan, and Felton Spencer. This shot is short. Pulled down by Roman Mueller. Settling for the jump shot again. Rather than sending cutters through, finding out it's a man and attacking it. Spicer to Parrish. Rebound Louisville. Air ball by Sullivan. Boy, they're struggling. The Bradford Smith is 0 for 3, and now there's an air ball by Everett Sullivan. Well, the poise of Louisville Cardinals is shaking just a bit. On the other hand, Ball State, they feel as though they're a team of destiny right now. They're doing everything they can to execute their offense, and they're doing a pretty good job of making Louisville play defense. Louisville shot to follow by Miller, and the rebound by Felton Spencer. Williams' shot won't go, but he is fouled, and the foul will be on Roman Mueller. That's his first. North Carolina now leading Oklahoma by one. You see Chandler Thompson come back in. You know, he does a lot of things for Ball State on the offensive end, plus he's a pretty good defender. But as far as Louisville is concerned, they still have to stop settling for that jumper and start penetrating to the basket, spreading their offense and penetrating because that's going to get Ball State out of that disguised defense they're playing. Williams, a fifth-year senior, hits the first. He played on the national championship team, Lenny Tolkien, in 1986. No question, he is the leader of this team. Well, he actually redshirted. He was with the team all the way, but he broke his wrist in preseason. But he still knows what type of chemistry is involved in winning the championship. Chandler Thompson looks for help. Has his shot knocked away. This foul will be against Mueller, so he picks up his second in a matter of 15 seconds. But Denny, can't, Denny Crum is just showing his team and telling them to settle down. They can't be concerned with trying to get all 14 points back at one time. But if they have patience, continue with their game plan on defense, they'll be in good shape. 
We'll keep you updated on that Oklahoma-UNC game out in Austin, Texas. Look at this. This is indicative of that defense that Ball State plays. Well, they're stifling it. Dick Hunsaker has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and he's tried it on some teams that may not have had the experience that a team like Louisville has, and it's worked. But I'll tell you what, today Louisville still has trouble recognizing what's going on. At the line is Dalton Spencer, seven-foot senior. Six minutes to play, first half. Great penetration from Spicer and just has it knocked out of bounds. To Spicer, another of the small penetrating guards for Ball State. But felt Spencer is the anchor on that defense. Does a nice job there. Spencer looked angry. Billy Butts. Can't get it to go down. Rebound to Miller, and he backs it in. Well, you know what's on Miller's mind, but you want to figure out what's on Louisville's mind. No fundamental blockout. Eric Sullivan walks. That's turnover number eight. You see the shot taken, and Miller just gets great position there. This is probably the reason Everett Sullivan's coming out of the game. Just fell asleep. This is not the kind of game you want to sleep through if you're a Louisville Cardinal right now. Spicer is giving Coach Hunsaker a lot of quality playing time right now while Nichols is on the bench with a foul. Thompson has his shot blocked, and the rebound is kicked out to Williams. Shot by Harmon as well. It's just too quick. The Louisville offense is too quick, and they're not really making Ball State play defense. Ball State playing with a great deal of confidence right now. Chandler Thompson in the paint. Good idea, poor execution. Tried to get it inside to Greg Miller. It's an amazing statistic. Louisville is only 26% today. Part of the reason is they're not hitting their outside shot, but they're not willing to go the extra step, make the extra pass to explore this Ball State defense. They haven't even tired Ball State out defensively. Biggest lead of the game right now for Ball State. It is poor shooting by Louisville, but it is also great aggressive defense by Ball State, as Lenny says. Harris has come back into the ball game, replacing Miller. Inside to Spencer, nice pass, and Holden converts. And that's what we meant by the extra pass. There wasn't a quick shot there. They explored inside, outside, and then dropped it off to the open man. Cross looks inside. Kid tells him no. Now Kid fires him off of the the key and a great follow inside by Sean Parrish. Right now, Louisville doesn't have any answers. First thing they have to find is a leader out there who's going to force them into running their offense. They can handle it on the defensive end. Harris will be called for the push from behind. That's his first. I certainly believe after the last time down with a nice pass from Spencer, that Louisville recognizes it's going to take that extra pass to get somebody open. They did it that time as well. Ball stayed over the limit. We're in the one-on-one -one situation. Holden, somewhat of an artist, likes to draw youngest of five children, majoring in criminal justice. And he hits that one. 74% free throw shooter. He's an alumnus of uh, Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. That's produced an awful lot of great athletes. Darryl Strawberry, Marcus Johnson, presently Stevie Thompson from Syracuse. And hits the second one. 3.28 remaining now in the first half. It's still Ball State. Big.
have yet to come a game of guards with Chris Jackson of LSU going against Scott Oliver and Anderson at Georgia Tech and Dayton against Arkansas. Dayton's won 11 in a row. Nolan Richardson has Mayberry and Day at Arkansas. That should be a pretty good matchup. All right, looking at 400 points worth of basketball in those two games. A reminder that the University of Connecticut has moved on, UNLV has moved on, and Clemson has already won. ACC now 6-0 in the NCAA. And Ball State with a big lead here over Louisville, trying to upset the Cardinals. Two eighteen ball state with three minutes left to play first half. Nice pass inside. And Harris just puts it in. And ball state can do just about whatever they want because Louisville, one time they pressure you, the next time they don't do a thing but watch it. Spencer with a power move. It's only the second field goal in the last five or so minutes for Louisville. They have to wake up and realize that that's where the ball has to go if they're not going to explore the defense and make it work a little bit. That cuts the Ball State lead to 14. Cross over top of Spencer. That's a tough way to go. Cross is only 6-1. Spencer's 7 foot. Here's the big guy in the paint. Rebound kid. Out of the cross and he'll pull it up. Are you surprised? Now that I'm watching it, I'm not. If you had told me this prior to the game, I would be. But in watching this, you see Ball State's a very patient team. They're also a smart team. They recognize when they have the advantages. Right now, they didn't have an advantage on the break, so they're going to execute, try to wear Louisville out on defense. Ball State entered the tournament last year with the overall best record, 29 and 3. They're 25 and 6 right now. At and you can tell the frustration. You see Curtis Kidd, who just committed the offensive foul. But Felton Spencer slammed the ball down as he ran down court. He's as frustrated as anybody out on this floor. Called for the walk, so it's 34-20. Under a minute 30 to play in the first half. Louisville trying to put some offense back to back here. Williams has the shot, pulls up and takes it. Thompson's been very quiet thus far. Well, he certainly isn't in the flow as he was against Oregon State, where he was almost unconscious. We also haven't had a chance to see his great leaping ability. You wonder if this style of play just isn't conducive to his ability, this uh, pattern and deliberate style offensively. You mentioned his performance against Oregon State, 24 points, 3 rebounds. 13 rebounds, rather. There they ran a little bit more. They just didn't hit their shots, except for him. Kidd with a power move. No back down to Curtis Kidd. He knows he's got Felton Spencer in a bind. 16-point lead, and Kidd now has 10 points. I can't. I just can't believe this. Well, Bradford Smith for three. He makes that one. But again, they have won, left Felton Spencer out of the offense pretty much. Secondly, they settled for the shot, the jump shot. That's Smith's first bucket. Five seconds remain. Trying to get up after it. Spicer had the shot, couldn't convert, and that'll do it. It's a surprise. 36-23, Ball State. That's the end of the half. Right now, let's take you back to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Jimmy. All right, a great story there by Ball State in the first half. The winner will take on UNLV. Right now, let's go to Austin, the Midwest, Oklahoma, and North Carolina in action. Just prior to the half, Brent and Billy are calling the action there. Yeah, we say hello to those of you who have been out in Salt Lake watching Ball State do a great job against Louisville. Here we're on right now, a one seed trailing, a four seed trailing, big time out on the west. 
and another one seed. Michigan State is winning against Santa Barbara, but it's close in that one. Michigan State by five at the half, Mike. 25-20, main reason. No one's shooting the ball well. 33% for Michigan State, 34 for UC Santa Barbara. A grinded-out game. Eric MacArthur, two points in the first half. All right, the uh, baseball situation, again, stirring up to bar in. First of all, in the East, Clemson, a big-time comeback, down 16 at the half to beat LaSalle. Uh, UNLV was uh, threatened today by Ohio State. Ohio State didn't want to quit. They didn't quit. They got in. He coached the Ball State Cardinals to a first-round win over Pittsburgh. It was his last victory as Cardinal coach. Majerus migrated to Utah, but was soon sidelined by open-heart surgery. Thursday, he was back in circulation, keeping pace with Billy Packer as Ball State played its opener. Paris McCurdy hit this buzzer beater and then showed that, yes, there just might be a touch of April in this Paris as he stepped to the line and kissed off Oregon State. For Paris and Majerus, it would not be the final kiss. Dick was sweating a lot more than I was. I, I was just, not, I mean, I was just a spectator. <laughs> Looks like trailing North Carolina, the one seed losing to the eight seed. Rick Fox has hit four out of five threes, has 14 points for the Tar Heels at the half in Austin. Meanwhile, Salt Lake City, Louisville shooting 27%, down 13 to Ball State at the half. And in Knoxville, Southeast, the one seed, Michigan State, five up on the Gauchos. And we'll get you back to your games, keep you updated on everything as we continue on the road to the Final Four. Continue after this message and a word from your local station. Basketball championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. 7-Up, the cool spot. And by Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette sensor shaving system. Gillette, the best a man can get. Ball State folks love it. They lead by 13. Trying to move on to the Sweet 16, where they'll meet the runners of UNLV Friday night in Oakland. Louisville in white with the basketball, Ball State in red. Tim, that was their lowest scoring half of the year, that is Louisville. And the reasons why, they haven't been doing the things that have gotten them to this point, particularly getting the ball to the big guy, and he's playing inside-outside game. The Bradford Smith tries to bank it in, the follow is no good. And Ball State pulls the rebound. Chandler Thompson comes down with it. Louisville shooting 33%. They were out-rebounded and out-hustled for loose balls in the first half. Biggest lead for Ball State was 16. On the other end of it, offensively, Ball State is just not backing down. They're taking whatever opportunities they get, and they're taking them with a vengeance. McCurdy walks with it. Ball State starts the half with Chandler Thompson, Scott Nichols, Billy Butts, Paris McCurdy, and Curtis Kidd. For Louisville, it's Keith Williams, the Bradford Smith, Cornelius Holden, Everick Sullivan, and Felton Spencer. The ball State defensively is forgetting about that disguise. They're playing a straight man-to-man -man right now, sagging on people whom they don't think can hit that jumper. Williams for three. And McCurdy pulls the rebound. I think the other big story is that Louisville does a nice job of offensive rebounding. They haven't gotten too many today. Ball State is surrounding their big people and commanding the board. Felton Spencer tries to knock it away, carries it out of bounds, and goes over the scorer's table. The ball will belong to Ball State. I think Denny Crum had a talk with his club about hustle at halftime. Well, certainly effort is something that's going to help you get back, but you need more than effort. You need some smart play, and most importantly, on defense, you've got to think about what it is that you're doing. Right now, Louisville may be doing just that. Ball State has controlled the tempo with its defense. This foul is called away from the basketball on LeBradford Smith, and that's his second. Well, I take it back. We talk about thinking as we look at Denny Crump. When a guy's going away from the ball and you're playing defense, why are you going to hold it? He's going away from the ball. You've got to think smart out there when you're playing comeback basketball. Paris McCurdy with the alley-oop, and LeBradford Smith pulls it down. Inside to Spencer. 
One of the few times Spencer got the ball without being surrounded by Ball State players. That cuts the lead to 11. Billy Bucks for three. Butch was the MVP of the Mid-American Tournament for the second straight year, 51 points in three games. This foul is against Curtis Kidd. Well, here's the point to be made for Felton Spencer inside. When he gets good position, and there aren't the Ball State guys surrounding him, he's got to get the ball. And if he gets it and they are surrounding him, gets it back out. Shot by Sullivan is long. Rebound Ball State. Butts will set it. This is Nichols. Nichols is not a shooter. Very rarely, if ever, shoots. He only averages two a game. But he's their best defensive player. Williams really doesn't even need to guard him. This is Kidd with the turnaround. And the big rebound by Holden. Tough shot by Williams, followed by Spencer once, and gets it the second time. Well, they solved one problem. The effort is there. You see the time remaining in the game. Butts got away with one, kicks it back out to Nichols, and Nichols says, settle down. Well, that's what the pressure was intended for, to try to get Ball State into a healthy skelter type of offense. Kidd got the line, and he also got fouled. This foul will be on Cornelius Holden. That's his second. Coming up later today, NCAA tournament continues. Connecticut is already in. Clemson is in. LSU and Georgia Tech will play out in the southeast. Chris Jackson, Scott, Oliver, and Anderson for Georgia Tech. That should be a great ball game to watch. Dayton, Arkansas won't be bad. Knight is on fire for Dayton. They've won 11 in a row. Kid, 10.7 rebounds at the line for Ball State. But Kid is doing a whale of a job inside against a Felton Spencer who he gives away about three inches. And Curtis Kidd hits the second one. He'll now go out of the ball game and Roman Mueller will come in. Mueller 7-1. 230 pounds, they want him to bang Spencer around a little bit in the paint. Well, that's what Dick Hunsaker said the other day. He's going to rotate three guys against Felton Spencer, use all 15 fouls. They're doing some bumping and grinding down there, too. Here's Spencer, has it knocked away, and Nichols has it. you got to turn and locate Felton before you do anything with the ball. You're drawing a lot of attention. Chandler Thompson has been rather quiet after that big night the other day, Thursday afternoon. He has four right now. He had 24 in the first round game. But you know, that's a great luxury when your team doesn't need you. Everybody else is coming. How about Roman Mueller coming in and hitting that? That's what you mean. When everybody else is clicking, you can have the night off. And the foul is on Chandler Thompson. That's his second. Pretty good ball game between the Sooners and the Tar Heels. 15-30 remaining in this one. It's still Ball State big. Action continues tomorrow here on CBS beginning at 12 o'clock Eastern time, so don't, don't miss that. Michigan, Golden Marymount matchup, Alabama, Arizona. Some excellent matchups tomorrow. We try to conclude the field of 16. Sullivan shot is short, and again, it's another rebound for Ball State. And Louisville still shooting poorly in the second half. They're now 2 of 10 
from the field, and it's because they haven't explored inside. Louisville picks up the pace defensively, man to man. Much more aggressive now. Clutch picks up his dribble, gets into some trouble, and gets it out to McCurdy. Under 15 minutes to play. Ball State recognizing how active Louisville is. Defensively made him work a little bit, tired him out. Clutch shot is long, Thompson follows. Ball State's biggest lead of the game, 44-27. And that man you saw, Denny Crumb, just can't figure out what else he can do. Inside to Spencer, and the little jump hook is good. They just don't give that a long enough look. They come down, do it once or twice, and then start settling for the jump shot. Just when they make inroads, they fall behind because they can't hit a lick from outside. Nice job of handling the full court pressure. Chandler Thompson, he can get up. I'd say so. Right over top of the seven-footer. Thompson is just 6'3", but he has that 43-inch vertical leap. What do you call it, a smooth rise? Easy rise. Easy rise. Spencer double teamed in the paint, outside the way. Oh, shot, hangs around hard. Talk about an easy rise. Chandler Thompson sees the lane Foul. and just skies over Felton Spencer. Spencer could do nothing but stand there and try to take the charge. Foul was on Scott Nichols of Ball State. So Spicer will come back into the ball game. Mueller goes out for Ball State, and Nichols will get a breather as well. Everett Sullivan will sit down for Louisville. And Jerome Harmon comes in. This is Williams for three. Long rebound. And Mike Spicer has it for Ball State. Sooner or later, they're going to get the message. Butt shot is long. McCurdy with the rebound. Oh, and inside to Thompson. Kimbrough comes down with it. Convergent. And that's how Louisville wants to play, but Ball State has kept them from playing that way thus far. 12.43 remaining in the ball game. McCurdy has called for the offensive foul. So with a 15-point lead, Ball State is taking some liberties, some things they hadn't done earlier, and when they see Louisville very harassed out there defensively. Rather than make them work defensively, now Ball State is trying to go straight to the basket. Paris McCurdy, as we see, is in a lot of pain after that. Had the wind knocked out of him. Right now, the number 12 seed, Ball State, threatening to upset number four, Louisville. The winner moves on to Oakland to play UNLV. This foul is called on Billy Butts. That's his first. And the 15th foul against Ball State Cardinals. How about this note, Lenny? All but one four-year player under Denny Crum has reached the NCAA Final Four. And that's in jeopardy right now. I'll tell you, that's a great recruiting tool, no question. Short. Smith with a follow. Short. Kimbrough hits and he's fouled. The foul will be on Curtis Kidd. Tim, you can sense the momentum, momentum shift and so can Dick Hunsacker. 
Louisville, with some newfound energy, continues to pound the boards as they should and should have been doing all game. But somehow or another, I think they face the possibility that they will go home after this game unless they go out there and take matters into their own hands. That's the third personal on Kidd. At the line is Kimbrough. And he converts a three-point play. Under 12 minutes to play now, and the lead is 12 for Ball State. Kimbrough's making a mistake there. That'll be number two on Kimbrough. As you mentioned, Scott Nichols is not a threat offensively. You're doing a nice enough job by, job by sagging on him, so why foul him? Welcome back to Salt Lake City, second round of the West Region. Ball State leading Louisville by 12. Paris McCurdy, the leading scorer and leading rebounder for Ball State, has been taken to the locker room. He is injured. We'll try to get you a report on that as soon as possible. 11:41 remaining in the ball game, and Ball State, the number 12 seed, trying to upset Louisville. Ball State right now doing a nice job of making Louisville play defense. Chandler Thompson gets it back and loses it off the foot of Spencer. Southeast region, Michigan. Defending champion, 7-0 under Coach Fisher. Carolina and Oklahoma doing battle. The reason Ball State wants to extend Louisville as LeBrasco Smith knocks the ball out of bounds, the reason they want to extend them defensively and make them work, it takes so much energy to come back from a deficit, particularly more than 10 in this period of time. And the more you wear this team out, the softer they'll be down in crunch time in the last four minutes. Turnover, Williams gets it. Oh, what a shot down low by Jerome Harmon. Cuts the lead to 10. Louisville has never led in this ball game. It's a 7-0 Louisville run right now. Curtis kick shot is short. Spencer with a rebound. Possession arrow belongs to Ball State. Well, Louisville now has gotten, again, some added life here. And Jerome Harmon with a nice baseline move. And what that does is give their defense a little more momentum. They're a little more bouncier in their full court pressure and in their half court defense. Paris McCurdy is back out of the locker room now and he checks into the ball game. Kid goes to McCurdy. McCurdy can't handle it. Kicks it back out. And it's taken away by Smith. Inside the center. And he's fouled by Sean Parrish. That'll be the second on Parrish. Denny Crum breathing a little bit easier right now. He thinks his team has gotten on its horse. Is now starting to ride to its destination. Still a long time to go, but Ball State, on the other hand, has totally lost its direction. They now are starting to put up quick shots and not doing the things they did in the first half. Spicer goes out. Billy Butts comes back in for Ball State. Dalton Spencer at the line, and it's a 7 nothing run for Louisville. Eight points, 11 rebounds for Spencer, but he misses the first one. The Louisville Cardinal team was so excited, they're still standing. The official had to come over and tell him to sit down during the free throw. Spencer rattles the second one down. And the lead is cut to nine. And you look at the animation on the defense now. Louisville believes they have a chance to get back here. Nichols tells his Ball State teammates to settle down. Let's get into an offense. McCurdy goes with that Kimbrough and loses it out of bounds. 
That's turnover number 13. Poor judgment by Ball State is allowing Louisville back in the game. But to give Louisville credit, they haven't given up. And Ball State wants timeout. Dick Hunsaker wants to settle his team down. The 12th seed is now struggling. 9.45 remaining in the ball game, and Louisville now on a 10-0 run. Ball State went up by 17, but now hadn't scored in the last four minutes. You saw the brackets in the West. UNLV has already advanced by beating Ohio State 76-65. The winner of this game moves on to Oakland and the final 16 to play UNLV. And for those people, they just threw the offensive foul by Scott Nichols. And for Nichols, that'll be number three. So those people who think that a Ball State win makes it a lot easier for UNLV to advance, think again. If Ball State wins this, they will have withstood enormous pressure, and they will have gained an enormous confidence boost. It will make them that much tougher if they withstand its run. Belton Spencer kicks it out to the Bradford Smith for three. Won't go. Rebound, Ball State. Boy, Parrish had a big rebound that time. Curtis Kidd loses the handle and turns it over to Williams. The lead is five. Certainly gut check that time now for Ball State. They've got to get someone who's going to get the ball and do something for them as far as leadership. They're just totally out of control. Ball State hadn't scored now in five minutes. Ball State seems to have caught the disease Louisville had in the first half. You think that stuff is contagious? Might be. It's a 12-0 run. We saw Louisville go on a 26 to 2 run the other night. Well, Ball State is trying to go back to basics, and Curtis Kidd did a lot for him in the first half, but here he just fumbles it away, and that's a gift right there. This foul was on Parrish. That's his third. So Chandler Thompson comes in replacing Parrish, and Thompson has really struggled today. He's got eight points. At the line will be LeBradford Smith. He's an 86% free throw shooter. Hit 30 straight in one stretch this year. One of the finest free throw shooters in the country. His two sisters played for the University of Texas National Champs. And he hits the second one. to pull up against the press. Got away with it, though. This is Nichols' team to run. He's got to make sure that everybody executes. Billy Butts gets it to go down for three. Pushes the lead back up to six, and it ends a 14-0 run by Louisville. And that was a good job. Nichols took the ball away, waited for everything to develop before he delivered the ball. Butts didn't even have to put it on the floor. Nice block by Chandler Thompson. Well, you forget the easy rise after making the block. He decides to push the button for the top floor. And he's fouled.
the third foul on the Bradford Smith. And if you're a Louisville fan, just when you thought it was safe to come out of the kitchen, here comes Chandler Thompson. There's some serious leaning and pushing going on between Felton Spencer and Curtis Kidd. Michigan State, number one seed, out of the box quickly today. Louisville has the right idea now. They're going to explore Felton Spencer as much as they can. Oh, Smith with a jumper falling out of bounds. This foul is called on Tony Kimbrough, and that's his third. This is Harmon, followed by Smith. You see the time remaining in the ball game. 52-47 ball state. The number 12 seed trying to eliminate number four. Curtis Kidd shot is left by Thompson. And Thompson is fouled by Kimbrough, and that'll be number four. Again, it's the turnovers that Louisville creates that's helped them get back into this game as well as anything else. That's the kind of ball they want to play. The Bradford Smith never gave up, didn't take it for granted that the layup was going to be made and followed up nicely. And he makes the first one. We told you how high he can jump. Ironically, he can't palm the ball. He said his dunks would be much more spectacular. <laughs> in the second one. Bradford Smith trying to take over. He bangs that one in. Tough shot. He now has 11. But right there, you see the Bradford Smith that a lot of people saw in high school that great potential to take over a game. If it's on Kimbrough, that's five. And it is. So Tony Kimbrough is out of the game. That's only his second disqualification this year, but he'll sit out and watch the rest of this one. And Tim, at the top of the show, we talked about Tony Kimbrough's experience being on an 86 championship team. Ironically, today, it's been a couple of errors committed by him that have really cost this team in a pressure situation. He's replaced by Cornelius Holden. And Billy Butts is at the line. Bucks is a 75% free throw shooter, drains that one. More importantly, at a 3.0 grade point average in the fall, working toward a degree in exercise science. And he hits the second one. Then he comes screaming out, run low. And I would imagine that's trying to go to Spencer, if anybody would listen. Armour tries to get it in Spencer, has to kick it back outside to Williams. Smith's had the hot hand, this is the three. The rebound, McCurdy. Approaching the five-minute mark, Ball State trying to hold on. He's going to say nice job by Thompson in, trying to, in splitting that double team. Beating the pressure allows his team a chance to run their offense. Chandler Thompson, shot clock at eight. 
Shot clock at five. Billy is fouled. The foul will be on the Bradford Smith for the block. Number 23, the Bradford Smith. Well, we mentioned Denny Crum calls for the play low, trying to get it to Felton Spencer, but Curtis Kidd doing a great job of fronting, pushing him out, denying the pass inside. His teammates are getting real impatient and settle for a 25-footer. Lenny, that's poor now on the Bradford Smith. And if there's anyone who's carried Louisville back here offensively, it's been the Bradford Smith from the outside. You lose him, and you're in serious trouble if you're Louisville. Lead is eight. Four and a half minutes to go. You know, they're not even moving towards Spencer's side anymore. The offense just gets into it too ah! Nice shot by Sullivan. 58-51, Ball State. <laughs> Connecticut, Clemson, and UNLV have all moved on to the final 16. They're winners today. Ball State trying to join that group, and Ball State wants a timeout. 51-58. Take a look at the timeouts remaining. Now, that timeout was charged to Ball State. And ironically, Ball State was just a whistle away from a TV timeout. So the next dead ball, next whistle, would have been a TV timeout. Instead, Ball State called it. And now they have two remaining, and Louisville has four. There's foul trouble. But Bradford Smith is the key there with four. Ball State 14-15 at the line today. Their last seven points have been from the charity strike. 3.56 remaining in the ball game, and it's 58-51, Ball State Cardinals. We look for Ball State to try to shave time off the clock before going into their offense, and by doing it, pulling the big people to Louisville, Spencer and uh, Holden outside. Let some of their big people handle it or set picks. Billy Butts gets the pick, takes it left side, and hits. And the lead's back up to nine. So now the upset is just three minutes and 33 seconds away from reality. And right now, Denny Crum has got to play this game, bring Jerome Harmon in, the offensive machine for Louisville on offense, and keep uh, Cornelius Holden defensively out there. Williams shot, followed by... <laughs> The lead is seven. Thompson picks up his dribble. And here comes Harmon. So Williams is fouled by Nichols. So for Nichols, that's number four. Well, you wonder if you're a Dick Hunsaker going into this semi-delay, if that's not going to ruin your momentum. Combine that with trying to fight this press and also fight the urge after you've beaten the press to take the ball all the way to the basket and your team has a bit of indecision. If you're just joining us, Louisville has never led in this ball game. Three minutes and four seconds remaining. And it's 60-53, Ball State, the number 12 seed. Williams hits the first. Louisville has trailed by as many as 17 points. They were down by 13 at the half, but now they're fighting back, and there's still time remaining. You've got to wonder just how much energy Louisville has left. They put on a long run and played some pretty hard and aggressive defense trying to get back into this game. Do they have much left to go over the hump? Under three minutes to play, and the lead is five. Second round of the West Region. Ball State is certainly going to test that endurance by running their offense in a pattern sense, shaving time off the clock. Thompson, right over top of the seven-footer Spencer. Stuff like that hurts. Spencer's fouled from behind by Nichols. The bucket will count. And for Nichols, that'll be five. 
four. Correction, he's still in the ball game. Finally get it in to Spencer. This is what the Louisville offense is going to have to do right now. With uh, 2.23 left, and right now they're down by five. They can come down and be a little more patient than they would have a couple of minutes ago, but they have to look in the Spencer, and they have to have the patience to stay with him, maybe one or two passes, because he's their biggest advantage right now. And he hits it. He's probably improved more than any single player in the country over his college career. And Ball State loses it. McCurdy couldn't get it in bounds with 2.23 remaining. Louisville takes a timeout. Two timeouts remaining. Louisville has three. Both teams are over the limit in the bonus situation. Foul trouble. Nichols has four. Kidd has four for Ball State. The Bradford Smith has four for Louisville. 2.23 remaining in the ball game. It's 62-58 Ball State. They've led throughout the entire game. One team will go home, the other will move on to Oakland. In the final 16 to play against UNLV, which advanced earlier today by beating Ohio State. And right here, Louisville's possession is after a turnover by Ball State. They couldn't get it inbound. Now they have to be very patient, but this is a shot they want to make now. LeBrandon Smith was the last to touch it. It'll be Ball State basketball. We talked about patience. LeBradford Smith, instead of giving a look inside, was trying to take matters into his own hands with a baseline drive and lost it. Two minutes exactly to go. The number 12 seed trying to hold on. McCurdy's double team and gives it up to Butts. And again, in the offense, shaving time off, bringing the Louisville big man out from under the basket to open up the cutting lane for people like Chandler Thompson and Billy Butts. Shot clock under 20. Taken away by Harmon. to overrule, but the foul will remain on Everett Sullivan. Almost a four-point swing with the missed layup, but Louisville Dodged the bullet right here, but they've got to make up the time. Inside the Spencer, he's triple team. This time the foul is on Nichols, and that is five. So Scott Nichols, the 6'1 senior out of Detroit, Michigan, the best defensive player and certainly the floor leader, will now lead the ball game. He's had a marvelous tournament here in the West Coast Bar. Nichols played Gary. Peyton of Oregon State Thursday night held him to 11 points, 3 for 12 from the field, but now Nichols is gone. And he pretty much shut down the Bradford Smith until the second part of this second half. Even now, Smith has only 11 points below his average of 14. Spencer's at the line, 12 points, 12 rebounds. He's 2 for 4 from the line together. Replacing Nichols will be Mike Spicer. And I tell you, that's an interesting tough substitution. You know, Spicer is a darting, quick ball handler, something the ball state will need if they're going to continue to delay on offense. Spencer hits the first one. Second one. 
The lead is down to two with 1.16 remaining. Kidd brings it across the timeline, his double team there. Thompson was all alone for a second and now kicks it back out. Under a minute to play. This is the sophomore Spicer back to Billy Butts. Butts is the senior, now has to take command. Then he calls timeout. He saw something he didn't like. 50 seconds remain. The lead is two. Play UNLV in Oakland Friday night. Let's talk some strategy now here because Ball State had a 17-point lead that's been cut to two. Louisville, the more experienced club, obviously the favorite coming in, now trails by only two. Well, Ball State's ball out of bounds with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Take a look at the you shot got clock. You've got to give away that, the shot clock. that uh, delay game and go in and look for the best okay, possible here we go. shots you can get. You heard fight, Ed fight, Hightower. Fight. Telling McCurdy to look at the shot clock. He has 19 seconds remaining on the shot clock. You see the time remaining in the game is 43 seconds. Louisville in his own right now, trying to take away anything inside. Well, now they're playing man-to-man. -man. They've come back out into it. And the turnover to Sullivan. Same irony, the same type of defense ball state play. And Louisville takes a timeout. With 29 seconds left. Louisville has two remaining. Ball State has one. It's 62-60. Is big. It belongs to Louisville. Ball State led by 17 with 13 minutes to go. Louisville has put on a rush. Ball State had only six turnovers in the first half. 14 here in the second half. Honey, what play do you run here? What do you try to set up? Well, you still want to look inside. You got Felton Spencer. That's your advantage. But it's got to be quick enough to allow you to offensive rebound. If that doesn't work, then you've got to go to the other side, some type of pin down with LeBradford Smith and Everett Sullivan. You see the time remaining in the game. Spencer down low, the turnaround. Rebound by Thompson. And he's fouled by Sullivan. Seven seconds remain. Denny Crump calls Keith Williams over to set up the strategy for the last seven seconds. Well, they certainly went into Felton Spencer, but see how far out he's pushed? He doesn't have position that he wants, and uh, Chandler Thompson gets... Welcome those of you who have been watching Oklahoma and North Carolina here at the John Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, second round of the West Region. And we have an upset in the making. Ball State, the number 12 seed, against Louisville, the number 4 seed. Ball State led by as many as 17, with just 13 minutes left in the ball game. Louisville has put on a charge, come back, pulled within two. Now with seven seconds remaining. The biggest rebound, perhaps, of the game. Chandler Thompson pulled it down for Ball State. Seven seconds remain, and he was fouled. Tim Brant and Len Elmore with you. And Lenny, is there enough time for Louisville? Well, obviously, there is. Chandler Thompson's got to miss the one of the free throws, if not both of them. With seven seconds, you've only got time for one play. Ball State with one timeout remaining. Louisville with one. Big game for Thompson after a slow first half has come on here with 15 points and he's been three for three at the line. He'll be shooting one and one. Louisville with two national championships in the 80s. Their last one was 1986. They were eliminated last year in the third round. Ball State came into the tournament last year with the best record in the field. They were eliminated in the second round by Illinois, but they're trying to advance here and play UNLV. That game will be Friday, this week 16, in Oakland. This is Chandler Thompson, the 6'3 sophomore from Muncie, Indiana. He had 24 points, 13 rebounds against Oregon State Thursday night. Well, Louisville is such a good team in the open floor. 
I would venture to guess if Thompson missed this, they won't call a timeout. They'll take it up. Rebound, Spencer. shot at the basket but this was not their day of all people to get the last shot Sullivan was one for eight today Dick Hunsaker in his first year he doesn't look like he believes it Ball State now goes to 26 and 6 It'll be Ball State and UNLV Friday night in Oakland. So for Len Elmore, I'm Tim Brandt saying so long from Salt Lake City. Once again, the final score, 62 to 60, Ball State. The Chevrolet players of the game, Chandler Thompson for Ball State and Jerome Harmon from Louisville. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship. Two glass slippers coming just seconds apart. A one seed ousted in the Midwest. Oklahoma is out of here. And the four seed in the West, Louisville, is eliminated, Mike. When you look at it, Jim, Rick Fox, a fantastic game, and Dean Smith, an eight seed for the first time. Going back to 1979, they had never been lower than a three seed, kind of a dangerous eight seed. What's this now? Ten straight years, North Carolina into the Sweet 16. The right. ACC still unscathed in this tournament, 7-0. and All five teams from the ACC still alive. Two have advanced on to the Sweet 16 today, Clemson and North Carolina. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Big Eight, both Missouri Kansas State, those two were ousted first round, now another one today, Oklahoma, leaving only Kansas from this conference that was so powerful all season long. Those three teams at the top all year, now of course, as you said, Kansas, the only team left out of the Big Eight, and Louisville goes down also. All right, Mike, so UNLV will face Ball State on Friday in Oakland in the West, and uh, North Carolina will await the winner of the Dayton-Arkansas game. Michigan State just the final seconds in that one, and it's an 11-point lead as the one seed there is going to move on. The Spartans will move on to the Sweet 16. To the final 16 for the 10th straight time. An unbelievable job here this afternoon in Austin by the Tar Heels. Their big men had fouled out of the game. Williams and Lynch were gone, and somehow the Tar Heels prevailed, and Billy Packers with Dean Smith. Billy? Coach, it has to be one of the favorite games uh, for this ball club that you've ever had in your coaching career. It really was special. I was so sorry for Scott Williams, who struggled. He was trying so hard, and I told him, let's win this so Scott will have a chance to come back. And what a great group. Uh, I told you I was happy with them all year, but I begged them in half, hey, do one thing for me. And I got on my knees and said, win. <laughs> Not often you ask for that. This win means a lot of things. Number one, for the first time in history of basketball, North Carolina passed Kentucky in the all-time winning. It puts you into the final 16 for 10 straight years, which is a feat that may never be duplicated again. And when I look at all the subtle things that both you and Billy did today, you know, he starts out in the man, he goes to zone, causes you problems. We brought the old four corners out. That's right. right. And, and in the last play of the game, I talked to Rick Fox earlier, he said that it was set up for him, but of course you have other options as well. What was going through your mind on it set up that last eight seconds? Well, I, I thought that we would get a good shot. I told him, if it doesn't go as planned, no worry. You know, we get it into camp.
and Elmore, and let's go out and hear from them right now. Timmy? Another upset here in the West. Ball State, the number 12 seed, upsets Louisville 62-60. Here's the last desperation shot by Everett Sullivan, and it was over. Ball State wins it, and we're joined now by two of the stars and, of course, the coach. There he is, Dick Hunsaker, and what a job he did his first year at Ball State. Comes back here where he played at Weber State, coached at Weber State. Your reaction? Uh, you know, just a, just a, what a dream, what a thrill to come back. We had had the MAC tournament in Cobo Hall in Detroit, where a lot of our kids are from, and they had a great hope coming. And what a time to come back and play in front of your friends and family. Dick, you had a 17-point lead with 13 minutes to go. Louisville made a tremendous charge. What did you tell your team during those timeouts? Well, during those timeouts where they're making the runs at us, you know, we, we said, you know, if we were you know, before the game with 10 to go, if we were up by 10 at that time, hey, we'd be great. You know, we'd be happy, and the kids really picked their heads up. And then we took the, the timeout about two and said, went over the same type of thing. We've got two to go. We're up by four. You know, that's right where you want to be. What are we talking, you know, down? This is Louisville. This is Final 16 time. And the kids really maintained their poise, their composure composure through that time, played through it, and ultimately our defense, when it was only fitting that they were to miss the last second shot, because the defense is what kept us here all year. Lenny's with two of the stars. Len? Okay, on my right is Paris McCurdy, and Paris, you heard Coach talk about poise and confidence. When Louisville made its run, did you feel that any of those things were shaken? Not at all. With our guys, I mean, we all have poise, and we don't back down to anyone. And during those timeouts, Coach was just stressing poise throughout, you know, duration until we went back on the floor. So I knew we would come out and uh, just keep our poise and play good ball. On my left-hand side is um, Chandler Thompson, and Chandler coming down the stretch there, Louisville made its run. There's some good defensive plays, but what was going through your mind as the last play developed? Well, I was, um, we was just trying to stop them from scoring and get the rebound and take the ball and hold on to it tight and get a foul, and that's what, one of the things we've done. Do you think you're a Cinderella team? You can say that. All right, back to you, Tim. All right, Lenny, congratulations, guys. Take a look at the brackets then in the West because UNLV moved on earlier today with a win over Ohio State. Ball State beats Louisville. It'll be UNLV and Ball State in Oakland Friday night. Once again, 62-60 the final. Let's go back to New York. All right, Tim. We'll say it. They're a, definitely a Cinderella, a 12 seed making it to the Sweet 16, the last 12 seed to make it that far, Wyoming, in 1987. Now, we'll be topping off the day with another set of games. Many will get the LSU-Georgia Tech game, the winner of that one.